Welcome back to VA Creative. And on this episode, I'm going to the factory, yes, the Ultima factory, to see for the first time my Ultima RS chassis cloaked in beautiful glistening white bodywork. Yes, here I am in my Fiat Panda, halfway to the factory. I thought I'd stop, have a comfort break, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Jeff, one of their master mechanics, has been fitting my bodywork over the last couple of weeks, and he's been sending me photographs, and boy, does it look amazing. So, hold tight, and I'm going to run you through the entire process of what's involved in this must-have upgrade. VA Creative here in the Ultima factory and I've arrived. I've arrived at this holy site and here is my Ultima RS chassis cloaked in that stunning bodywork. Do you want to see it? It's amazing, it really is. Now Jeff, the master mechanic, I'm interviewing him in a minute to show, to show you what masterpiece he's made here. So just hold on and I'll turn the camera around. There it is, look at that. Oh, I'm gonna wet myself. Those rear lights, badges on. Flawless gel coat, the four vents in the rear clamshell. The GTR only had three. These large holes, those are for the vents that go above the wheel arches. And look at those shut lines. Waffa thin, waffa thin. Roof scoop, doors. Oh, carbon wing mirrors. Just look at those. Just look, look, all in focus. Ah, oh. as we pull back. See the front clamshell. Oh, I'm just gonna have to stop. I'm gonna have to sit down. And look, 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 look at this. Carbon fiber. Okay, Jeff, so for the audience, how long have you worked at Ultima and how on earth did you get this job? Okay, well, I've been here for 20 years this year, and um, my previous job was actually uh, restoring and maintaining historic race cars. And I only live five minutes away from Autumn Sports, and I saw the job advertised, and I thought, why not give it a go? So, um, yeah, I came in, spoke to Ted, met Ted, um, which was really nice, and um, he was very interested in what I did. Yeah, two weeks later, and I started work here at Ultima, so, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, this is, well, you've been at Ultima for all this time. Have you yes. specialised in bodywork fitment and the composite panel? Pretty fitment? much, yep. yes. Um, since I've been here, I've been doing the body prefits. Yes. I do get involved in other work, but mainly body prefits. Okay, super. Um, yeah. And I guess the question is, can the normal DIY car builder do this at home? Is that, is that possible? Yes, absolutely, yes. So we've got a very comprehensive um, build manual and um, we're only a phone call away if anybody does need any help or assistance, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, I, but I guess the benefit of having this service is it accelerates the process and it uses all your years of experience to make yes. sure everything is yeah. spot on yeah. because everything's visible, isn't it? It is, All yeah. the shut lines, the positioning and everything, yeah. so. Yes. So, well, thank you, Jeff, for looking after my baby, and I must say, I'm almost tearful. Jeff, can you explain to the viewers on the process we go through when you receive a chassis from me, such as a customer? 
Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to do is to um, protect the chassis in uh, key areas while the body's being taken on and off, um, so we don't want to damage it. The next thing we're going to do is to find the centre um, of the roll cage. Um, so when you cut the rear bulkhead out, um, the body will go on um, to square and centre to the chassis. Perfect. So now we know where the centre of the roll cage and the centre of the body is. What, what's the first sort of body panels that get put on the car? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to um, transfer all those measurements from the roll cage over onto the bodywork and they will be cut out. Um, but in terms of the first panels that go on the car, they will be the side pods. So we'll get the side pods on and make sure that they are in the correct position and ready to accept the, uh, the centre section. Um, and then it's all a case of uh, lining all the body panels up so that we've got a nice flush fit here and here. And then once we're happy with those, um, then we'll move on to the, uh, the front and the rear canopy. Excellent, excellent. So we haven't put the doors on yet, no? No, no, we haven't put the doors on yet. Okay. Um, the doors will come later. Okay, so do um, we do the front or rear canopy first, which or doesn't it matter? Um, I generally start with the rear canopy first. Okay. Um, so I'll get that one on and um, again we'll, we'll centre it up on the rose joints at the rear. Okay. Um, so that it lines up um, with the centre section. And the rose joints, this is at the rear, so this is where the, the whole rear clamshell pivots, yeah? It is, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, it's all fully adjustable. Um, so backwards and forwards and um, we can shim it from side to side as well. Okay. So, yeah. so that's the back clamshell and then the front, I yeah. guess that is that exactly the same process? Um, pretty much, yes. Um, although we can't finalise it um, with the RS until the front splitter um, has been installed. Um, because it all pivots um, off the aero mounts um, which do actually sit on the front splitter. Okay, okay, I'll have a look at those in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have the, so the side pods, centre top, yes. rear and front clams, yep. and then do you move on to the doors next? Um, yes, um, again, once the doors um, are actually fitted, um, you'll tend to um, find that we can still move panels around mm -hmm. um, to get the doors exactly where we want them. Um, but I don't finalise anything until the doors are actually fitted. Okay. Um, um, we, sorry, Paul. Yeah, so, so we, we still want everything to, to be movable and adjustable so that everything is locked down as one. Um, so I don't like to fit something and say, right, that's in, the, that's in its final position until I've got everything fitted. Um, so we still want it all movable. Super. Uh, and the doors, how do they hinge? Because they're quite complex, aren't they? They're like butterfly. Yes, really, they so. are, yes. So um, I'll just up, open this one up for you. And move around here. Okay, okay so we've got uh, two hinges. Um, this is the bottom one. Okay. okay so and is there a gas ram inside there? Yes, so there is, yeah, there's a gas ram in To hold there. it open. Yeah. yeah. And, and then up here, I and guess, there's the top there, we've got another rose joint. That's beautiful, um, look It's all fully adjustable. So there must be reinforcement in that windscreen surround to take yes, that? Yes, there is, yes, yes. It's okay. fully, fully reinforced. And then we have the door latch, yep. which is up the top. Yep. And then that goes down onto the striker, I guess, which is, yeah. Yep. Yes, that's right. Yep. So, so right, so the doors are on now. Yes. Now, I noticed there's also the weather seal here. You put that on for gapping, do you? Yes, it's really important that we fit that at the, um, at the prefit stage. Um, Again, it does help us get the door gaps correct. Okay. So what about that roof scoop? I love the roof yeah, scoop. Yeah. So, so, so does that go on now, or is it, or is it like the last one of the last things to go on? It's one of the last things to go on. Um, I don't like to fit it too early on because it can interfere with the uh, the fitment of the doors. Um, so okay. once the roof scoop is actually in position, then I will trim the doors then to fit the roof scoop. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's it's one of the last things to go on. Super. Yeah. Can we can we open the rear clamshell yeah, and sort sure. of get an idea? Yeah. What it looks like inside. Yeah. 
So these, this is on gas rams as well, yes? Yeah, that's on the gas rams, yeah. Then we have inner wheel fenders. And that reminds me that I can see the rear lights there. And you, you fit the front and rear lights as well? We do on the, the RS, yes. Um, we test them before they're fitted as well to make sure that everything's working correctly. Oh, they look cool, I must yeah. say. They are really nice. <laughs> wow. And of course, when I get that home, I'll paint the inside, yes. as we spoke about earlier, and then I'll add the grills. Yeah, so with the rear canopy, it's just a case of um, getting it painted and fit the rear grills. Um, it's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much all you've got to do to that, really. Okay. And this firewall here, as I could like to call it, so this is particular to my engine fitment, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, as you notice, we've got the LT5 rear bulkhead there. Um, which has the recess in for the, uh, for the supercharger. Of course, for the blower. Yes. Lovely. So can we lift the front shell now and see what's clamshell yes. and see what's yeah. under there? So we can see that the front lights are fitted. Yep. Also, what's that black bit? I saw that, that, that this piece here. Yeah, it's that's the, uh, just the reinforcing uh, stiffener. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It just takes some of the twist out of the, uh, out of the front end. Okay. And well, I can see that the strategically placed, these are rubber, are they? Pads yes, to... yeah, they're, they're all cut to uh, exactly three millimeters. So when we do set the body panels up, um, we've got nice even gaps all the way around. Okay. And then look at these wing mirrors. I uh, rather spoiled myself with these high-end wing mirrors. And, and to be honest, I saw you marking these out in the photograph. It, it looked yes. relatively straightforward to fit. It is, yes. Um, once we determined exactly where we, uh, we needed to fit them, um, we've got the measurements for those now. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward process for them. Yes. And I noticed they're not symmetrical. I guess that's for no, our IVA, not. is it? Um, is it? They offset um, mm -hmm. between left hand and right hand drive. Okay. Um, to get a clear field of vision through the A pillar. Um, okay. So the mirror is always closest to the driver. Oh, I see. So yes, of as you'll notice there, the, the, the driver's mirror is yep. closer than the, uh, the passenger mirror. Okay. Um, it's purely to get the correct field of vision between yes. left hand and right hand drive. And then the front splitter, yes. which is a work of art. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's beautiful. And that, that's fitted basically last, is it? Or near enough last in the process? It is, well, it is one of the last components, yes. Um, because, as I was mentioning earlier, we don't like to lock everything into position until everything's fitted. Yep. Um, so, again, we still need the front canopy to be able to, be, to move around until the, the, uh, the splitter's been fitted. Wow, and these are made of machined yeah, alloys. Yes, bit of aluminium. Okay. Yeah, anodized. Super. If we close the lid, we can get a close-up look at these lights. Yes. I'll put in the insert the um, some working. So these are. LED, yes? Yes, yes, they're all LED. So main beam, dip, side, yes. indicators and... Yeah, yeah, it's all LED. And then there's two little fans there, what are these for? Yes, so we've got um, one at the top and one at the bottom. Um, they're both running in different directions so that we've got a nice constant flow um, of air circulating around inside the, um, the Perkspex cover. Um, purely to try and eliminate uh, any condensation um, okay. within the light. Yeah. And how long will it take you to do this body prefit from start to finish roughly, would you say? A um, number of days? For us in the factory, um, we're probably looking at about six to seven days, okay. working days. Um, but for a customer, it's very difficult to, to put a time on it because uh, obviously we don't know exactly how long they're going to be working on it um, each time. Yeah. So, um, 
the idea is to just enjoy the process and take your time with it really. Of course. Yeah, 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 there we go. You're famous. <laughs> New customer, Nigel. New customer, that's right. It's my baby. My baby. Good show piece, and, this one. This is a, a grade? Yeah, so this grade one's got the larger grades. Uh, yes. 14 inch, uh, with six pot characters all that. It's also it's got the Nigel shots oh, right. as well, that's okay. uh, which are an optional extra. Yes, yeah. It's an option to Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, the, the standard kit still comes with shocks, but these are like <laughs> a upgrade. Right. Yeah. 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 Can, can I uh, make a picture? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it, Nigel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, feel free. Take any right. photos, yeah. yeah. Oh, Take a picture of me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Works both ways. Yeah, it does. Works both ways. Oh, is it going to be 300 points? Which size is the break? Uh, they're 14 inches. It's the smallest of things. It makes you happy. It is. in the Dean Den and what a day I've had at the factory. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. And Richard and crew, thank you for making me feel so welcome and also putting my channel on your TVs in your showroom. <laughs> it, it, was, it was great. And what I must say is having been to the factory, the talent of the staff there is second to none. Most of them have been there for decades, basically, and they do their jobs so, so well. Also, as a business, Ultima are incredibly buoyant. The orders keep coming in, and the French contingent you saw 
in the video a bit earlier. Yep, they put a deposit down. So what an amazing, amazing setup it is. So I must apologize for the background here. My virtual study, pff, I've had to take it all apart. And why? Well, I've had to disassemble my Dean Den for a very good reason. And it's up there. Yes, the RS came home yesterday and now it's sitting just there. It's, I'll show you it in a second. Amazing. And what I've done is I've put the actual chassis and body all up on chassis stands. So what that will do is save my old back when I'm finishing this off over the next 10, 20, 30 episodes. Just, just depends how relaxed or quick I want to be. But rest assured, you're going to experience every single step. So next, let's go and have a look. What do you think? It looks good, doesn't it? It really looks good in the Dean Den. As you can see, the height of it means that it's easy to work on for the rest of the build. This is where it will stay until I put the engine and gearbox in. And at that point, I have to take it off the stands because then it gets a little bit heavy. Then it's nudging over the 900 kilogram mark. The first job to do, which you'll see in the next episode, is I start taking body panels off. Why? I know it sounds counterintuitive, but there's a very good reason. And the reason is the body prefit ensures that all the shut lines are perfect and all the hinges are aligned, etc., etc. Now, the thing is, what I have to do is I have to remove the panels to actually paint them inside, to actually add the grills, to add the heat cloth. And there are a lot of small steps to do before they go on permanently. Now you may think we're going to lose alignment, but we won't because what the factory does is put in multiple holes which allows the panels to go back on in exactly the same location as they are now. So on that note, I'm going to crack open another beer because I can just look at this for hours on end. So until next time, keep spannering and Keep smiling because the next episode, we're really going to roll our sleeves up and start on the next part of the journey. Live your life within the moment, moment, and don't go wait until the morning, morning.